In the space race this week, the SpaceX Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, scrubbed its test launch yesterday, but planning another attempt this week. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab adding hypersonic suborbital launches to its services. Morgan Brennan is in Colorado Springs for the Space Spin Symposium, where she is joined by Rocket Lab CEO. Morgan. John, thank you. That's right. I'm joined by Peter Beck, uh, founder and CEO of Rocket Lab here at one of the biggest space conferences of the year, which really spans the gamut. Everything from military space to civil space to commercial space, a lot of commercial space. Yeah. And a lot of investors actually here are on site this year. Let's start with your news of the week. And that is the fact that you are introducing this new service to uh, test hypersonic capabilities suborbitally. Yep. Why are you doing this now and how big is this market? It's quite an exciting time because it's it's an entirely new you know team for us and um, you know the U.S. is is, uh, is is kind of lacking behind in hypersonic technologies uh, and uh, this is a great opportunity to have you know high cadence uh, test flight environment for, for these payloads to really move forward uh, you know the U.S.'s hypersonic research. So in terms of suborbital tests, I mean, it's not so much a new capability for you as a repurposed one with your Electron rocket? Totally. So we, we take a standard Electron orbital class launch vehicle and we fly it in some really unique trajectories to provide these, these hypersonic trajectories. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, taking an Electron and uh, making a couple of wee tweaks to it and all of a sudden we have this great you know, high-frequency hypersonic testing platform that, uh, that hasn't existed. Yeah. Meantime, your Electron rocket, you've done two launches from yep. your new site in Virginia. Yep. Uh, you've got more launches coming uh, specifically out of New Zealand uh, in, in the coming weeks mm. as well. Uh, launch cadence for the year and yep. how is the reusability efforts? How are those going? Yeah, good. So our launch cadence this year, we're on, on target of sort of 15 flights. Um, you know, our fastest turnaround so far this year was seven days between flights. So we're, you know, the machine is cranking and, and the vehicles are, are flying successfully. Uh, and, um, you know, our last flight was a re reusable vehicle and we splashed that down successfully and now we're, we're kind of at the point where we're recycling and harvesting, you know, engines and components off those launch vehicles and getting ready to, to actually put them back into service and refly them. When does that happen? It happens pretty shortly, yep, yep. So um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say exactly, but it happens pretty quickly. Uh, so those, it's not just one engine as well, it's, it's you know, uh, a whole multiple gambit of, of reused components that are all now kind of re-entering the production line and, uh, and, and going back into service. The conversation I keep having, and I've had it multiple times just here today alone, is yep. the fact that you have this emerging mismatch between supply and demand when it comes to the satellite launch market. The fact mm. that there are so many satellite constellations that are poised to go to orbit in the coming yep. years and not enough capacity in terms of getting them there. So what does reusability of Electron enable and also the development of your new neutron. heavy lift yeah. neutron rocket? Yeah, so, so Electron is, is really serving that market very, very well. Um, and and, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of flight opportunities and that's just sort of, you know, doing its thing. Uh, Neutron is the new flight opportunities for us where, um, exactly as you say, in that sort of 2026 to 2030 time frame, there is a massive deficit in launch. Um, and there's lots of constellations that are all, you know, really vying for an ability to get on orbit. So, um, you know, we, we, we saw that coming and, and we started work on the vehicle, so hopefully we can bring it into service in 2024 and really, uh, really, really solve some of those problems and take advantage of that market opportunity.